Hello, so in this video I talk about counting. Uh, so I have a set A and I want to know how many elements are in A and that's the notation that we use for the number of elements in the set A. Now why do we want to count the number of elements in A? Here's the reason. Remember that in a finite sample space S where all outcomes are equally likely then the probability of any event A is given by the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements in S. So we need to count how many elements are in A and how many elements are in S. Now if A and S are small sets, this is an easy task. However, if they are big, we need efficient ways of counting. Counting by itself can be an entire course. So here we focus on some specific important cases that are used frequently in probability. So let's start with an example. Uh, so, uh, a coffee shop has three types of coffee, dark roast, light roast, and decaf, and you can order your coffee in a small uh, or a large cup. So, the question is, in how many ways you can order your coffee? Okay, so let's count them. So, your coffee can be dark roast, light roast, or decaf, and then you can order it in small or in a large cup, so let's just write it as S and L, small, large, small, large. Um, so we see that there are six possibilities here. In fact, we can do the counting in, in this way. So there are three possibilities for the type of the coffee, and for any type of the coffee, there are two possibilities for the size. So the, the total uh, number of ways you can order a coffee is three times two which is equal to 6. And this is in fact called the multiplication principle. It says that if you are doing some experiments sequentially, let's say I have experiment 1 and then experiment 2, then experiment 3, up to let's say there are R of experiments. Now let's say there are n1 possibilities for the first experiment, the result of the first experiment. Uh, for any option or for any result of the first experiment there are n2 options for the second experiment and so on in three options for the third experiment up to n r options for the last uh, experiment then the total number of ways you can do these experiments is n1 times n2 times n3 times n r so the multiplication principle says that suppose that you we perform our experiments such that the k experiment has n k possible outcomes, then there are n1 times n2 times n3 and so on possible outcomes for the sequence of our experiments. Okay, let's look at another example. So let A be a finite set with n elements, then the question is how many dif distinct subsets does A have? Well, for example, if A has, you know, let's say, uh, two elements, A equals to 1 and 2, then here are the subsets. The first subset could be the, you know, empty set. We can have uh, you know, the set that has only one element 1, or the set that has element 2, or the A itself. So these are all subsets of A. So in this case, we have four subsets. The question is, uh, how about in general case? If A is 1, 2, up to N, how many subsets does A have? Well, to answer that question, we can uh, argue in this way. Suppose that we are choosing a subset B of A. So B is a subset of A. So how do I do that? Well, I, I can say that I can choose B by doing N experiments. So experiment 1 I ask the question whether one belongs to B or not, right? In the second stage, I choose whether two belongs to B or not. And in the third stage, I choose whether three belongs to B or not, and so on. And the last one, I decide whether N belongs to B or not, right? So. How many choices do I have for the first question? Well, two. One belongs to B or one does not belong to B. How about for the second one? Still two. Two belongs to B or two does not belong to B. And 
also for the third one and so on and the last one there are two possibilities now by the multiplication principles there are two to the n ways that I can do this experiment that means that there are two to the n ways of choosing a subset of set A so the total number of subsets is equal to 2 to the n and as we see in this case when n equals 2 the number of subsets was equal to 4 so here I need to introduce some terminology so basically here's a general scenario I have a set I want to choose elements from that set at random we refer to this as sampling so sampling means choosing elements from a set so when I choose an element from a set I say that I sample from that set and we often draw a sample at a random from a given set in which each element has uh, uh, the same or equal chance of being chosen so there are different ways uh, for sampling sampling can be with or without replacement so suppose that you have a bag of marbles and uh, I pick an element from that marble now if I put that marble back before taking the second sample this is called sampling with replacement so what it means is that I can choose the same marble twice so sampling with replacement means that repetition is allowed and sampling without replacement means that repetition is not allowed sampling can also be ordered or unordered ordered means that ordering matters so if I choose a1 a2 a3 then this is different than a2 a3 a1 so I care which element I choose first and so on unordered I only care about which elements I choose I don't uh, care about the order of elements so we will see examples of these to better understand this terminology okay so let's start with the first way of sampling which is probably the easiest way and that is or order sampling with replacement so here ordering matters and with replacement means repetition is allowed So I have a set A, let's say it has n elements, let's say it's 1, 2, 3, up to n, and I want to draw k samples. So I want to know in how many ways I can draw k samples from a set A, where ordering matters and repetition is allowed. So if I look at a simple case where A is just 1, 2, and 3, and let's say k is equal to 2 so I want to choose two elements from a so what are the possibilities so it could be 1 and 1 1 and 2 or 1 and 3 or it could be 2 and 1 note that 2 1 is different from 1 2 because ordering matters it could be 2 2 or 2 3 and finally it could be 3 1 3 2 and 3 3 so in this case I have nine options so how about in the general case where a is equal to 1, 2, 3, up to n? Well, in this case, I can argue in the following way. I can say that, well, I am doing n, or sorry, k experiments sequentially. So experiment 1, I choose the first element. So experiment 2, the second element, and I need to draw k samples. So experiment k is the last one, and I draw my last sample from the set. Now, in how many ways I can choose an element from the set? Well, there are n elements in A, so the first experiment can be done in n ways. Now, the second element, how, how many options do I have for the second element, or the second sample? Still n, because remember here is sampling with replacement means, means that repetition is allowed. So, any of the elements in A can be uh, my second choice. And how about the third one? Still n. And up to the last one n so the total number of ways I can choose these samples is n times n times up to n there are k of them so it's equal to n to the k so this was order sampling with replacement and in next videos we talk about uh, order sampling without replacement and also uh, unordered sampling with or without replacement